You know, this was very hard trying to record this video. Um, it was hard because I had to really think about Florida State fans. I had to think what I what I what I can say to Florida State fans. Um, what can I say to really not disrespect Florida State and to not really hurt these fans because these fans are hurt. Um, the, the way that they played tonight, especially in the second half against the Georgia Tech team that's coming off of a triple option offense. Um, that pretty much a lot of those guys from Georgia Tech, I think, entered the transfer portal because they just didn't fit the they didn't fit the system. Um, they have a true freshman quarterback in Jeff Sims, um, and Georgia Tech beats a team that used to be, and I'm quoting this from Top Billing, the mecca of college football in Florida State under Bobby Bowden back in the days. You talk about a Florida State team that used to compete for national titles, a Florida State team that's in the nucleus of rich talent in the state of Florida. With a whole bunch of guys, a whole bunch of rich NFL talent that's that Florida State has produced over the years. They this team just won a national title. What they seven years ago? They they won a national title uh, six seven years ago. It wasn't that long ago that Florida State were national championship contenders. And now that they've been they 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 reduced to this, to losing to a team that's fresh off of coming off of a triple option offense with no spring ball at all, all they with no spring ball with no spring workouts nothing. All they had was summer workouts and training and, and, and a short, reduced training camp. And Florida State still ends up losing to Georgia Tech and true freshman Jeff Sims. After having a 10 to nothing lead, after blocking four PATs or four field goals, they still lose. The offense still looks generic. James Blackman continues to struggle. The running game is, isn't really there. The offensive line, I don't know what happened to them in the second half, but they just fell apart. The play calling was atrocious. Defensively, they were spot. The, de defensively, I don't think they played bad. They forced turnovers. Asante Samuel Jr. had two interceptions. I think what this kid, Garner, uh, 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 Gainer, this guy was all over the damn place. They lost Joshua Kendoa, who I hope, hopefully he recovers, man, because that dude has been battling through a whole bunch of injuries throughout his entire career. But Florida State played well enough for this offense to take over, to take control over the game and win. But no, the coaching was off. The play make, the, 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 the decisions from the players as far as... Uh, as far as communication goes, was off. Everything was off. The only thing that showed up were the fans, the reduced fans that were there. They were the only things that showed up, at least in the second half. They showed up all game. Florida State just straight up disappeared. And the fact that Georgia Tech took control and won that game, is a, is, it is a, a complete embarrassment to the Florida State program and the tradition um, that those guys uh, that that program has been accustomed to, that they no, that they were accustomed to, because that's no longer the case. This is a program that is rebuilding. They have to strip everything from the uh, from from. They have to strip everything. They have to start off from scratch. Something has got to give, and clearly they can't keep replacing these coaches because it seems like for some reason the the the, the AD can't find a, the right coach for Florida State. So you can't keep firing them year in and year out unless you can find a high quality head coach that you think can take over this program. It's amazing to me. And then you look at a program like Miami that struggled with UAB. That even though I think Miami's a little bit on the come up and they're starting to show a little bit of progression, Miami, sh that should have been a team that should have been dominating the ACC or should have at least been battling with uh, Clemson and Florida State for a long time. And they're just finding their way. I got to give a lot of credit, though, to Georgia Tech. Again, they're coming off of a triple option offense. If you don't know how hard the transition from a, from, from a, from a triple option to a spread offense is, 
It is extremely hard because you have because you have to recruit a whole bunch of new players. The players that are still there that are adapted to that uh, that are adapted to that style of offense has now has they now have to adapt to the spread. And I think defensively they changed too. The Georgia Tech they it was a completely uh, new coaching staff, completely new players, and they still won this game against Florida State even with all the advantages that Florida State had. Georgia Tech still came in their in their house and won that game. Incredible. And I got to give my hats off for Georgia Tech for continuing to fight, especially Jeff Sims, who threw two pick sixes damn near in Florida State territory at uh what what around the 30 or around the 25 yard line? Twice to Asante Samuel Jr. This just goes to show you, man, that anything can happen in college football. But, but it's, this also goes to show you that Florida State is no longer the program it used to be. Florida State is a mediocre program. And it's hard to say that because not literally three years ago, this was a top five program. This was a program that was going against Alabama as the number three ranked school in the country. And now Florida State is reduced to mediocrity. It's a shame, man. It is a shame. But um, anyway, that's just all I have. Florida State fans, if you guys want to chime in, or Georgia Tech fans, if you guys want to chime in, we can definitely hash it out in the comment section below. Anyway, Jan716, a.k.a. Jan Sports. I'm out.